What is up guys, HD here, welcome back to Homesick. Now, I was gone for around about 40 minutes trying to solve this puzzle, and I think I've finally done it. And it's, it's a difficult one, I tell you that. So all these cubes you have to change to the corresponding letter, but it's really hard to find out what letter it was. I managed to figure out that these ones here have to represent the fact that this is home sweet home. So, that now says home sweet home. If you go into here, it says A, B, C, D, E's missing, but F, which is all this stuff. And then I've got link here because the way I worked this out, which is a very annoying way to do it, but I had to get walking back and forth. Bear in mind, you can't run in this game. You're set at this speed. I had to walk all the way over here. Sometimes I had to go up there, but I had to go all the way around here. And read this note. Now you'll see these aren't symbols anymore. These are letters, which is great. But if I go here, that's now all in perfect readable condition, which is brilliant. I also had to, like, there's blocks over here that I had to change. There was a lot of back and forth backtracking, and it just wouldn't have been that entertaining for a video, which I, which is why I'm glad I cut it out. I ended up figuring out that this is like a library cell, so A to F, and I was like, oh, that must be a G, which is how I figured out the G symbol. G to N, O to R, and then. S to, e S to Z, but now all these books are perfectly readable, um, in my knowledge, yeah, they're all readable, which is great, meaning I might go and backtrack and do all the reading for some of the books. Um, also, I forgot to save at the end of the last episode, so I've had to do this entire section again, but I didn't really get far anyway. One thing I will do again, though, is the piano thing, because that needs to be done. So, I won't make you sit through it, I might just speed it up and... It'll be entertaining for you, maybe. I don't know. Did I not pick up the thing? I must. I swear I did. Damn it, unless I didn't save me picking that up. Damn it. Oh well. Um, I'm not sure what relevance it has, but we'll do this as we're here and this is new. So these are all abled, labeled A to E now, which is great. So elevator breaker instructions. Follow these carefully or the elevator will not work. I don't know why, it's just really bad wiring, I guess, but I've found that this is what works. First, make sure all the breakers are off. Then, in this order, turn C on, flip A and B on, then turn C back off, lastly set E to on. No, left is on and right is off, so turn C, A and B, and then C off and then E. So, uh, C, A, B, C off, and then E. That work? I said the elevators, I think I did that right. Left is on, right is off. Oh, bollocks. We'll do it again, we'll do it again, we'll do it again. Right, Th then in this order, turn C on, flip A and B on, then turn C back off, lastly set E to on. So, C, A, B, C, E, yeah? C, A, B, C, E. That's right. Left is on and right is off. Yeah, that seems about right. So, I think now I can call for the elevator. Not too sure though. No? I swear I did that right though. I might have done, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing something. So I do know I need to turn this flower over here on. Well, turn it on, you know what I mean. I need to fill it up with water. But to my knowledge, I don't know where any water is currently in this section. Um, this door is locked, so we do end up needing to find that. Maybe we can unlock that door later. Now, further up here, there is an unlocked room. It might be this one. Nope, okay, it's this one up here, because the door's already open. There's this cabinet, and originally I couldn't read this note, but it says spares keys in here, the combination is 3311. I would have been doing that combination turning trick for ages, but if it's 3311, that's not that bad, because there's spare keys in there, and that, I reckon that unlocks the room that's locked, so boom, there we go. 3311, open here. Keys! Yay, we got keys. We got quite a lot of keys. We got three keys here. Three different keys. Okay, so is this one? Let's find out. Get the keys out. Keys, keys, keys. There we go. There we go. There's one. Cool. Okay, this is like an office. Okay. It's different. Science Fiction Shorts Volume 3. It had been over a hundred years since the rover sent a transmission, yet there it was, coming in loud and clear. The century-old rover was talking again. You see, we humans, we left it out there, and they found it. 
they fixed it. For them it was probably simple. Now, that simple rover that was designed by a team of your great grandfather was a part of that simple rover designed to look for life has become our robotic ambassador to the first alien life we've ever found. We make things and sometimes, if we're lucky, we make something that can have an unimaginable impact. We just hope it will be for the better. The young inventor only half listened. He was busy making things of his own, but eventually he'd learn the lesson for himself. Ah, okay. Definitely fiction. <laughs> Dear Russell Paxton, the regional short story writing competition is... Why is that not a... Q? That's meant to be a Q. Got it. Quickly approaching and we do... Yeah, that does say do it. The smudge confused me. And we do hope you submit an entry this year. We very much enjoyed your submission last year and are looking forward to what you have been working on lately. Good luck. Danielle Barnes, Regional Director. Okay. Random story idea notes. If a robot inventor invented a machine that could make anything that started with the letter N, would what would the machine create when asked to create nothing? It wouldn't create anything, surely. <laughs> logic, logic would dictate that nothing gets created. I hope. It's really dark in here. It's not just you that th thinks it's dark in here. It's, it, it's genuinely dark in here. So water in the bathtub? Oh. Did we just come in here for the stories? Well, we got more keys than one, don't we? So we can unlock multiple rooms by the sounds of it. Whoa. Okay, look. It's definitely a large set of apartments. Uh, We've got this one too. Oh, no. That's the one we just read. There's more reading over here. I don't think I can read any of them books, but this one lights up. Ampiri. I think so. Ampiri, yeah. By Russell Paxton. Another one. Garo slowly walks through the door after a long day at work. Inside, as he closes the door, something else scurries in. He doesn't seem to notice, or if he does, dismisses it at a tired delusion. As a tired delusion. He flips the lights on and sits down in front of a large TV and watches for a bit. He goes to bed early, still moving slowly, carrying a heavy weight of the laborious workday. The lights go off, leaving only the red glow of a simple alarm clock. The number starts to move. It's quickly turned upside down, and then the numbers go out. Garo wakes up late the next morning, confused and looking for his clock, wondering why his alarm did not wake him. It's off. The battery cover removed and two batteries sitting next to it. He curiously puts them back in, only nothing happens. He looks through the open bedroom door and sees his wall clock. It reads 10.40. He realises he's late to work, though still confused he puts it out of his mind and scrambles out of bed and leaves in a hurry. At the end of the day, Garo returns from work and is once again in no mood to do much, from, much of anything. He plops his mask down on the couch, picks up the remote and hits power. Only nothing. Frustrated, he hits power again and again. Nothing. He hangs his head in defeat, but then notices once again the batteries on the floor. He now remembers this, the, the morning with the alarm. He puts the batteries in the TV remote and tries with renewed vigor. Still nothing. He looks at the batteries. They read empty. Angry now he approaches the freezer, it's cracked open by a slither of cold light. He doesn't notice though. He wisps the door open and suddenly freezes, not by the cold but by the sight. Inside the freezer is a robot about the size of a small dog, but built no more like a monkey or flying squirrel. Across his head it reads, Ampiri. It's sitting on a half full carton of batteries. Garo keeps in the freezer. Why would you keep batteries in the freezer? Anyway, the carton is torn open and the little rascal of a robot is inserting one of them into his chest, replacing his two old batteries with Garo's fresh spares. As soon as they sh sh uh, as soon as the shock is worn off, Garo furiously tries to grab at Ampiri. The little robot is too agile and 
elude Scaro's big hands. And Perry swats at them cat-like, then leaps out of the freezer in a, in a shower of ice cubes and frozen dinners. Garo tries to pursue, but slides on the smorg smorgasbord, smorgasbord of freezer items. Never heard the term smorgasbord, but I have now. He crashes into a lamp. Half the room is in darkness, and, and Imperi slips away. He puts the two remaining good batteries into the TV remote and resigns to relaxing for a bit. When he's done, he takes them out and puts them into his alarm clock. He hears something scurrying in the walls, and Peary is still here. He wraps duct tape around the, the alarm clock, lays down, and falls asleep. In the darkness of sleep, a scrapping sound starts. Goro, in a very grodgy state, sits up. The scrapping sound continues. He looks over at the alarm clock, straining to open his eyes fully, and Peary, indifferent to Goro's awakened state, is furiously clawing at the alarm clock. Like a dog digging for golfers, he is lost in his carving for fresh batteries. Garo finally takes it all in. His grodginess gives it gives way to the imminent anger, and he, as he pounces out of bed at the alarm clock, he's too slow, and Empiri darts off into the nightstand. Running straight up the wall like a squirrel, Garo comes crashing down on the nightstand, breaking one of the legs. The table sti uh, stilts, and he slides onto the floor. I meant to say tilts, but we'll just drop that. Then rolls over and sees Imperi running across the ceiling. Tired and defeated, Garo, without getting up, pulls the blanket o off his bed and resigns to sleeping on the remainder of the night on the floor. Too tired and defeated to even get back up into bed. He closes his eyes into a happy slumber, but then he hears the muffled alarm going off in the wall somewhere. It's quickly halted. With the pop of the battery cover, and Peary has gotten those batteries, Garo gets up and leaves for work. The night he enters with a bit of unusual vigour, he looks down at his new wind-up watch and gives it a few good winds. He goes to bed early, the wind-up watch and alarm on his bedside table. A few days go by, and Peary has been frantically searching for batteries. He's tried several times to reuse batteries, hoping some of them might just have a little bit of juice left. I, I don't know why I added that, but anyway. One day, Garo comes home to find Imperi in the middle of the apartment. He looks very tired. Garo approaches slowly. Imperi sees him and tries to crawl away, but collapses. His eyes go dim, and as the last bit of energy drains away, Garo is standing over him in triumph. He picks him up by the head and drags him out of the apartment. Garo returns with Imperi and a shopping bag. He sets Imperi down on the floor and takes out a small battery charger and some batteries, double A size, and puts two in the charger. Then he puts the other two in Imperi. Imperi springs to life and starts to run away, but the batteries aren't charged and he slows to a crawl. Garo grabs him and holds him in front of the battery charger. He shows Imperi how to take care... Take Ah, he shows Imperi how he takes out a battery and swaps it with one in the charger. Then he swaps the other one, he sets Imperi down. Imperi tries to run away, and this time he gets a little further. Part way up the wall, he runs out of juice and falls back down. Garo grabs him and demonstrates swapping the batteries again. He sets Imperi loose, he begins to feel weak. He circles back to the charger. He swaps his batteries himself and sits down by the charger to wait for his spares to get fully charged. Garo part, pats him on the head approvingly and takes out the new electric alarm clock and proceeds to put the batteries in it. He's setting the time. Huh. That was actually quite a little cool story. Um, glad we read that. Don't know how long we were reading for and I did make a few mistakes, but who cares? That was quite a cool little story about a weird monkey robot thingy. Yep, definitely. Definitely was. <laughs> Not every day you can say that, is it? So, we have got more stuff to look around and look more stuff to read. I think I feel like the next few, few, yeah, the next few episodes will be just be backtracking and reading all the information because this will teach us stuff about the residents that lived in these apartments and it might give us a bit more story about what happened in the game. So, dear Mr. Riggings, okay, this layer is in response to your inquiry regarding the scope of protection afforded 
to whistleblowers and whether you would qualify as a whistleblower under the law of their jurisdiction. From what you have conveyed to me, I believe you would be protected under the letter of the law. However, given the recent political climate, there have been several cases of individuals who deserved protection, but the governments found no reason to deny them protection for political reasons. Okay. From our prelim... Ah! Oh my god, I can't say the word. Preliminary... Ah, oh, fuck! You know what it means. Anyway, investigations conducted by our investigative team, it appears that there are indeed violations of several environmental laws occurring on an ongoing basis, putting the entire region at risk. My advice is for you to go public with your information, and myself and my colleagues are ready to defend you in the fullest extent provided under the law. However, I do warn you that it will be difficult, um, be a difficult battle with many risks. Sincerely, Lewis Z. Clark. So whoever lived here was a whistleblower, so he found out something that he probably wasn't meant to find out. So now I'm curious to find out what that was. But we might not. We might, but we might not. Which is annoying. Can I read any of these? No. If you're not a fan of reading, by the way, I apologise, but the, this game is very interesting and I'm curious to find out the lore about it. So, secrets to being a powerful leader. Oh, that, that was it. I can't go any pages in. Okay. Great. I am reaching the point where I can no longer turn a blind eye to what is going on. I am not sure what to do about it, but I can't ignore it any longer, pretending everything is okay. What are my ethical uh, obligations? To my supervisors? To the people working under me? To the community? To myself? I have worked so hard to get where I am. It has been a long road to get to become the assistant manager of operations in my department. I am sure many will kill for my job because I get paid more because I get paid more and have more opportunities for future promotions. Does that all mean I should just do what my supervisors want me to do and not say anything about all the problems that I see? I just heard from my from a neighbor that those um filing cabinet yeah filing cabinets in the large community room down the hall used to be in the in my apartment. I guess the guy that used to live in my apartment unit, who was the manager before I took over the position, was transferred to a different district really quickly. The move was so quick that he didn't take all of his belongings with him, and a bunch of filing cabinets were left. The janitor moved them down the hall, and I don't think he even realised what is still in there. There are slides and newspaper articles in there that make me think the previous manager was con concerned about some of the awful things I am seeing. Now that I have his old job, I guess he never spoke up about them, but I think I will. I finally found an attorney to talk to, uh, to talk with who I am hoping he will- Ah, bollocks! I finally found an attorney to talk with. I am hoping he will have some advice about what I should do. I think there are definitely some laws by being broken. Okay, so his company, maybe this company, he, he yeah, he wanted to be a whistleblower because he didn't agree with what his company was doing. Okay, but we don't know what that was. And I wonder if there's a different story in each apartment because that'd be really cool. That'd be really, really cool. It'd be interesting. Now, this door, I forgot to show you, I had to unlock this door, and there's a block behind this door that I had to change the letter G. But, but this door, this leads back to the right at the start of the game. And I think it's just an easier way to backtrack to do all the reading if you wish to, but ah, that's that's a nice view. Anyway, because look, leave the hall lights on, management. But now we can actually go back and read the stuff we looked at earlier. I'm a cat and you're not. <laughs> that's, that's it, okay. Peaceful drift. A collection of poems about sleeping in New York. Cool. Introduction to the silence, science of sleep. We can't read that one either. Cool. I can't sleep on this bed anymore. Are there any more to look at? There are probably... Yeah, there's one. There we go. The building of Strats. An underground city in, inhabited by two very, very different cultures, often at odds outside the walls. But inside a population of peace. Hmm, interesting. 
That genuinely is interesting. I barely slept at all last night. I was tossing and turning for hours. I couldn't stop thinking about my new job. It is so awful here. There is so much destruction and pollution. The, the air is thick with smog and toxic dust. People say we are helping to provide energy, but I think there has to be a better way. I just want to earn enough money so that I can leave this place. One nice thing did happen today. For lunch, I sat with one of the other workers that happens to live on my floor. He was such a nice guy. He told me about his family and how he hopes that this place isn't too dangerous for his child. Like me, he hopes to earn enough money at this job to be able to leave and move to some better place. Some place better. Told him about my insomnia, how I can't sleep because I, I am, yeah, because I am overcome with worries about how bad things are. He was so understanding and nice to talk with. I wish he and his family lived next door to me instead of, of ah, instead of my current neighbour, the bachelor. Okay. He is so loud all the time with his parents' parties and dates, making it even harder for me to fall asleep. I started babysitting my co-worker's son. He is such a fun little kid. Spending time with him really lifts my spirits. He is doing so well starting to learn to read. I think his other favourite thing is to play hide and seek. The other day he was playing a game of hide and seek with his parents and he hid in my apartment and I wasn't even home from work yet. His parents went looking here, um, for him and found him in here. I, be I barely said this one I've jumped yet though, we're back to the beginning. Okay. Interesting, so... That's me, that's my character. So who's this little kid? Right, next we got this one. We are separated now, as she said, but I still have years of memories of her, memories of good times past. I still dream of her every night, but where the dreams end and the memories begin sinks into the abyss, the abyss of the everyday obscurity. Now only a few things still linger as I remember that some part of it was real. The hardest part is letting go, Letting the memories blend together into my dreams. The saddest part is losing the details as the memories become only stories. It's like losing years of myself. That's kind of sad. Yeah, that, that, that is kind of sad. Dreams of dress up for romance. That's it in this one. Right, so I'm heading back now only because I feel like I should move on a little bit. But I do plan to do the rest of the reading. Just as of right now, no. Um, just not right now, like, I, I don't even want to read a certain amount of day, I don't want to bore you with just reading and reading, unless you're really interested in it, then next episode might just be the reading, I'm not really sure how many readings are left, I know there's a fair amount, but it, it's not insane, so, um, the elevators, that's the next thing I've got to do, meaning I've got to do this, but I've done this, so, C, A, B, C, E, yep. They're all left. I don't know if that's... Oh, wait, that's left. Yeah, that means on. C, A, B, C, E. That should be it. They should be on. Or powered, or... I don't know. Maybe I need to play the piano. Oh, that's what I need to go and get. I need to go back to the uh, bedroom and get the uh, piano sheet. Because, for some reason, I don't have it. Which is kind of annoying, but it's in this drawer, so it's not that bad to go and get. It's not in this drawer. Where the f what? I don't have it, do I? I swear I don't have it. I got that. Bucket. That. Oh, I do have it! Oh! The more you know! The more you know! Cool. Right. Let's go and do this. Like crouch. And let's speed through this, shall we? There we go, there's that. 
just for a little piano thing that I can't seem to pick up. I'm not sure how relevant it is, but I thought I'd do it anyway. So yeah, that's that. Right, okay. Let's see, music plays now. Hmm, I'll read these ones in the next episode, I promise. I promise I will. And what difference does it make if music's playing? Hmm, I, can't, I can't call the elevators. Put it down. Alright, we'll try this again. Left is on, isn't it? Left is on, yeah, so I need them off. Off. Off, off, right. C, A, B, C, E. Why is C sideways? Well, I'll leave that episode here because it's going a bit wrong. I don't really know what I've got to do at this point because the piano thing just does the bit of paper. But the elevator like puzzle I can't seem to get working. So if there's anything I missed, I'll have a look around in a bit. But it'll probably be a while before I do another one of these. So if you, if you want to see more, leave a like, obviously, and then let me know down in the comments because if you enjoy it, then I'll carry on. I'm enjoying it, but like I said, it's, it's a matter of if people want to see it. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the video, and I will see you in the next one.